respected Shri Amita Bachan ji, dignitaries on the dais, my dear patients who have come from Hyderabad, members of the media, and distinguished guests. We begin with a short film that has been made by Usha Lakshmi Breast Cancer Foundation a few years ago. Built the first uh, purpose-built uh, breast cancer unit in Hyderabad, the first of its kind in our country, so to say. And this entire uh, range of activities, right from the first level of self-examination to the second level of science. Could we have the presentation, please? Could we have the lights down? Like everybody, everyone has turning points in their life. And the turning point in my life, a major turning point was when my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer. Sir, my mother conveys her greetings to you. She's 84. She could not come because of significant osteoarthritis of the knee. She's your great fan and she has watched all your movies. And she's asked me to convey her regards to you. When she was diagnosed, when I reflected on the delivery of breast health care in this country, I realized breast surgery is not a subspecialty. There are very few dedicated breast specialists the con in my lifetime. So before we move on, I'd like Sri Amita Bachanji to give a bouquet to the person who developed this app, Mr. Mahadevan. Please come on to stage to receive this bouquet, sir. Nothing gives me more pleasure than to introduce my patients. Two of them have come. One who is a very young... Great honor to be here and to be able to felicitate Dr. Raghu for this immense service that he has done for breast cancer. I met him about 10 years ago, 11 years ago, in London. And I was surprised to find... This mobile app, Mr. Bachchan, as we all know, is a national icon and a role model to all of us. And his endorsement to this cause means, really means quite a lot to us. So without further ado, I would request Mr. Bachchan to address the gathering, after which, okay, we will we will have the release of the mobile app first. After which, we would request Mr. Bachchan to address the gathering. Dr. Raghuram, Mr. Padmanai, Avia, Mr. Ranjan, Pam Auntie, <laughs> Mrs. Pamela Chopra is family to us, so she's the one that actually um, drew my attention to this very worthy cause and to this wonderful gentleman who has been working so hard towards this uh, cause. I'm delighted to be invited here today, Dr. Raghuram, and uh, delighted because uh, in the past I have been associated with many uh, medical causes and taking up um, campaigns that uh, hopefully have worked. We work for the United Nations for polio and uh, uh, almost laboring for eight years, we were able to uh, have a condition where India is today polio free. I've been working on tuberculosis, uh, hepatitis B. Uh, hepatitis B is, uh, is a dreaded disease 
uh, also working on diabetes. But one of the things that uh, came through with all these campaigns was the fact that um, no one was able to draw attention to the people that you need to uh, understand what the disease is, to be able to know what it is, to be informed about it. And when these aspects of the disease were brought forward, then the working of the campaign became a lot easier. Having knowledge of the disease is the doctor's job. But the people that suffer sometimes feel that um, they don't need to consult, or when they need to consult, it has become too late. And therefore, timely intervention and informing the, the medical profession of, of your disease, as I have noticed, has been uh, very beneficial. I say this out of experience because uh, when we did polio, we, um, uh, we had a lot of trouble convincing the people about taking this dosage because there were a lot of apprehensions, there was a lot of resentment to the fact that uh, these doses were not actually helping the patients or was going to prevent the child from getting polio. But we worked consistently and were able to convince them. And eventually, as I said, today India is polio free. <clears throat> For tuberculosis, I... Um, I joined the campaign because I'm a TB survivor. Uh, in the year 2000, suddenly I was uh, detected with tuberculosis. And uh, because I was able to timely inform my doctors about it, or the doctors actually found out about it, and I was able to take a treatment, uh, I was able to come out of my tuberculosis. And one of the things that I keep saying uh, uh, almost uh, uh, with, with due affection and with due regard and, and, and great humility, is that if it can happen to me, it can happen to anyone. It's much like what the lady just expressed. If it can happen to her, it can happen to anyone. Tuberculosis is normally associated with people who live in lesser means, in, in bad environments. So if it could happen to someone who, by the grace of God, has had better facilities and better environments to live in uh, and, and, and work in, can happen to me, it could happen to anybody. But timely intervention, informing people that uh, going for detection, putting yourself up for, for analysis, or just going to a doctor and doing proper investigation was able to save millions of people. The same thing happened with uh, hepatitis B. In the year 1982, uh, during the shooting of one of my films, Cooley, I had a, a bad accident. And um, um, during the course of my uh, hospitalization, I needed a lot of blood, uh, almost 200 uh, uh, packets and bottles and of blood was needed. There were uh, almost 60 bottles of blood. There were 200 people that actually came forward to um, donate blood to me. And uh, one of the uh, donors uh, was carrying the dreaded hepatitis B virus. Uh, the Australian antigen virus it was something that had just been discovered and uh, the doctors were unable to identify it. It went into my system and I didn't know about it until the year 2005, which through a general um, testing that I was going through was suddenly discovered. And it was discovered that it had uh, destroyed 75% of my liver. What I'm trying to say is that I today survive on 25% of my liver. You can survive liver diseases, I believe, with uh, even 12%. But the fact is that it was detected, timely intervention was taken, and even though I have lost 75% of my liver, I am able to survive and stand in front of you today because proper care was taken at that point of time, and it was detected in time. Much the same is what I've been hearing from all the speakers that have talked about breast cancer. Time and knowledge about it is known, you have two very good examples this evening who have told you that they were able to survive and are happy that somebody like Dr. Raghuram was able to take care of them and bring forward uh, all the, uh, the, the medical uh, help that was required. I'm very happy that an application today has been devised where people who are not knowledge enough about breast cancer uh, can know about it. 
I, I was a little apprehensive about it until Mr. Padmanabhaya informed me that what I was apprehensive about was that application is something that is more prominent in urban areas and cities and metros and more uh, so-called educated people. What happens to people in the villages because the application needs to be understood there. But he now informed me in, the, in his speech that uh, the incidence of breast cancer in rural areas is less than what it is in urban areas and therefore that is very heartening to know. But I presume that there will be some kind of uh, device where the application is um, brought out to the rural areas as well and they are educated enough to know how to use them. I saw the app this afternoon, uh, Dr. Raghuram and I met earlier on, and I was delighted to know the various aspects of the application. It gives you information about what breast cancer is, of how it is treated. Sometimes in society it can become a sensitive issue. It can become a topic that is sometimes embarrassing for women. But uh, I feel that, um, that you know, one should not feel embarrassed or, or, or sensitive about a disease. Uh, we're all human beings. So we are all susceptible to all kinds of illnesses. And the app actually leads you through various aspects of what breast cancer is, how it can be treated. Post-operative uh, care or post-care is, is a very important element in most diseases. And uh, as we saw in the application, some of the aspects of how to treat uh, breast cancer after you have been treated are very important. I'm delighted today that I've been associated with this campaign. And, and Dr. Raghuram, may I just offer my services, my voluntary services to this wonderful campaign. If in the future you would require to use my face and my voice uh, towards this campaign, I shall be more than willing to help you. Thank you so much. conclude this evening, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Usha Lakshmi Breast Cancer Foundation, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to Sri Amitabh Bachanji for kindly releasing the world's first app on breast health care in 12 languages. I also have no words to express my gratitude to Sri Pamela Chopraji. Uh, she has been uh, an, a patron of the Usha Lakshmi Breast Cancer Foundation and her unwavering support over the 10 plus years the foundation has been running, uh, it's a true honor. And we're very happy to have you here today. I also thank Sri Padmanabhaya Garu for uh, gracing this evening. And this event would not have been possible without the help of Mr. Neil Raheja, president of the Raheja Group, Mr. Pavitra Nambiar, the general manager, JW Marriott, and Mr. Rajesh Chaturvedi, uh, and his very hardworking group of uh, people at Ad Factors. I also thank the media for covering this event, and I request all of you to join us for dinner uh, soon afterwards. Jai Hind.
Thank you. 